Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at Luminar Neo. Now I have covered Luminar a lot on this channel over the years, but I haven't talked about it in a long time. And I thought it'd be really cool today to revisit Luminar Neo and see some of the new things that Skylum has added to this. One thing I want to say before I get started, if you're not familiar with Luminar Neo, essentially it's developed on four basic principles. So one, Luminar Neo gives creators the tools that they need to get results that previously seemed impossible. Luminar is built on AI technology and it includes intelligence tools such as Accent AI, Sky AI, Skin AI, and many others that we're going to cover in this video. Two, Luminar gives you maximum flexibility and this manifests itself in the ability to use layers. And so what we can do is we can create layers on an image. It's a great way of organizing the edits that you're performing. I'll show you how this works in a second, but you can do any edit to any layer and you can stack those to get your final image. Three, Luminar sets out to provide extremely high quality imaging results. They have a raw processing engine that gives you very high precision color processing, full dynamic range in both shadows and highlights, raw denoising as well as demosaic that provides outstanding results. And four, Luminar provides high performance that allows anyone to create based on your experience level with really good results, even on average hardware. It's very efficient these days, and you're going to see that as we go along. So one thing I want to explain a little bit as we get going, if you've never used Luminar before, the interface is quite simple. So on the left-hand side of the interface over here, you're going to see a series of folders, and that's essentially your catalog. So you can put this on an external hard drive. You can keep it local on your hard drive. This allows you to navigate folders that you create and keeps track of your catalog. On the top, in the middle of the screen, you're going to see three buttons here. We have catalog view, presets view, and edit, and that's the work flow that we're going to be using to go through each one of these images. And then over on the right hand side, you're going to see a list of whatever tools are available. Now we are in the catalog menu right now, and I want to talk a little bit about some of the tools that are provided in the catalog. So this includes generative tools, which are new and these are really cool, as well as extensions. So I want to start with extensions because these are tools that are extremely handy when you're dealing with files that you need to be doing a lot of stitching on, for instance. So if you have HDR bracketing and you have, let's say, six different photos of different exposures and you want to get a really wide dynamic range in your final image, this is where you would stack those images. You can also do panoramic stitching. So if you take a panorama of a landscape, let's say, and you have six or seven images, you can now stitch them together here. It will also do things, for instance, upscale, which will allow you to increase the size of an image without losing resolution or detail. These are things that are pretty destructive to the overall image, and that's why they're over on the catalog side. They're not something that you would want to go back and necessarily undo later, and so that's why it's not included in the edit menu. But another thing I want to talk about are some of their generative tools. And this is where things get very interesting. So the first one is called Gen Erase. We also have Gen Swap, and then we also have Gen Expand. What these tools allow us to do is to use AI to make pretty heavy edits on images that surprisingly are the things that people want requested the most. So for instance, for Gen Erase allows you to do something that's very common with imaging. If there's something you don't want in the image, it allows you to actually paint over it. It's going to use AI technology to fill in the gaps of what's missing. And I'll show this to you in a second. We also also have Gen Swap that allows you to select something in an image and you can use AI to replace it with something else. And then we also have Gen Expand, which is really cool because a lot of times, let's say you're working on a layout or something and you need a little more in the image than what's there. It allows you to, in small increments, actually increase the size of the image and create data that is not there. So let's go ahead and take a look at how Gen Erase works. This is really cool. So I'm going to select an image in the catalog, double click it, and it's going to go full size. Now the way this works, I'm going to simply Simply select Gen Erase, and it's going to load up the interface. And this couldn't be easier to use. You're going to see that the cursor turns into a paintbrush here, and I can actually adjust the size of the paintbrush and make it larger or smaller. And what we're going to do is simply paint over an item that we don't want in the image, and it's going to do its thing. Now, a couple ground rules here that make this work more efficiently. First of all, if you've got multiple things in the image, Skylum say that it's best to do them one at a time. That's going to keep things a little easier on the engine. So let's say in this image, which is not that great of an image because there's too many people in it and I want to get rid of somebody and let's pare it down to just three people. So I want to erase two people, this woman that's got her back turned to us and probably this woman that's sitting down too. So I'm going to go ahead and start here and I'm just going to paint over this woman who's sitting down and you don't have to be very precise about this. In fact, it's best to go outside the lines just a little bit, make sure you include the shadow here. Once I've got her selected, you're going to see the erase button light up at the bottom and all I have to do is go ahead and click that. It's going to start doing its thing and it takes just a couple seconds here and voila, our 
our subject is gone. So one of the things that's important to know, and in this image, I'm actually just kind of dealing with some small items in here. So it does a really good job of just filling in replacement image for what is going to be gone in the end, what we're erasing. One thing to note though, is that if you don't like the results that it gave you, and in other words, it's a more complex image and it's not quite flowing with the image, you can hit erase again and it will try again a second time and you're gonna get slightly different results. So that's something that's very handy too. So I've got one image removed or one person in the image removed. I'm gonna go here and paint out the other individual here. And we'll just kind of, like I said, you don't have to be precise at all. I'm just going to go a little bit outside the lines and I'm gonna go ahead and say erase. It'll do its thing once again. And by the way, it is using AI in the cloud. So this is nice because it offloads some of the workflow from your computer into the cloud. So it just runs more efficiently. So don't worry if you have a slower machine or more average sized hardware. And voila, our second person is out of the image. So now I'm left with the three that I want. So all I need to do now is click save. And one thing that is important to note here is it's going to put it, if I go back to the catalog view, it's going to put it in this folder over here called generative creations. This is really cool because it actually duplicates the image and makes a second version. So your original image is left intact if you need to go back to that for some reason. But now I've got this and I'm ready to roll on to other things. All right, so the next thing I wanna cover are presets. Now presets is a feature that has been in Luminar for a while and I've covered it here on the channel before, but just in case you're new to Luminar, I wanna talk about this because presets will save you time and Luminar Neo is all about saving you time and keeping things quite effortless. So remember up at the top, we have our catalog view and I just went full screen with an image that was in the catalog. If I click on the second one over here, it's going to be presets. Once we're in the presets pane, you're going to see all of your presets listed over here on the right-hand side of the screen, and they are organized by category. So we have essentials, landscape, mother nature, so on and so forth. One thing that you'll notice as you're working in here is that different images prioritize different presets. This menu will shift around over here, and that's because Luminar Neo is AI-driven. It's using AI to select what is probably going to be the best suggestion, not necessarily what you want to use. You can go through and use whatever you want, but it's going to give you the best suggestion first. So for instance, on this one, I'm going to go under Essentials. And when I go into that, it's going to build previews of each preset here. And I can hover over them. And I can see this one goes to black and white. We've got brush up here, which gives us a little more color. Anyway, these all do different things. And it gives me a preview of each one. It hasn't actually rendered it yet. Now I can select any of these. I pick the one I want. And once you do, you're going to see a little slider over here. And this is, for instance, a pretty contrasty preset here. So I can back off on that a little bit. And once I get a look that's kind of close to what I'm looking for, I'm ready to edit if I want to. And so I can go into edit and I can perform more actions on this. A note about presets that I want to make that's really cool is that a lot of these use these artificial intelligence sliders. So in a traditional sense, you would think of a preset doesn't necessarily work for every image. You would actually have to go in and do some modifications. These are a little closer to being usable because they're using artificial intelligence. And so that's something that's very cool. All right, so now I wanna talk about some of the editing tools that we have available and how powerful these are. So a lot of times with an AI slider, you're sliding it, it's using artificial intelligence and it's actually doing multiple things behind the scenes. And I wanna show you just how powerful this is. So this first image that I've got up here is very underexposed. This is one that I shot last summer when I was in Banff. And this was a tough image because these clouds were above the mountains that you see here. And there's a lot of dynamic range that is needed to get this image to work right. So basically the rule is, is that when I'm capturing it, an image, once you've blown highlights, it's very difficult to bring them back. So if I had exposed for the mountains down here where it's darker, this is backlit essentially, then I would have blown everything out in the top and I can't recover that. So I intentionally took this image underexposed. It requires a lot of work in traditional editors to get this looking pretty good again, but I wanna show you how easy this is in Luminar Neo. So the first thing I wanna do is we're going to use the Relight tool. And so it's all the way down here under Creative. And when I select Relight, what this does is it gives me a couple different sliders and Luminar is actually going to build a 3D map of a 2D image here. So it knows what's in the foreground, what's in the background, and it allows us to balance out that light that's in the foreground versus the background. So for instance, if I just bring up the slider for the brightness near, you're going to see that the bottom of the image gets a little brighter. Well, I'm going to need it brighter going way up, right? So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use the depth slider and we're going to go ahead and bring that up. And you're going to see, let me do it quickly. See how it just moves through the image. That's the 3D map that it's created. So I want it to go all the way to the right here because it's going to get all the mountains here. And I want to bring the brightness far. We're going to bring that down a little bit, bring my brightness near. Let's go ahead and bring it all the way up. Now it's still a little bit underexposed. The next thing I'm going to do is go back under the develop menu. And this is pretty traditional here, but we're just going to bring the exposure up just a little bit here. 
starting to look good. Another thing I want to do is maybe get the white balance situated a little bit. Let's bring the temperature over, cool it down. Maybe bring in some reds here in the tent. And that's so far so good. Another thing that I want to do with this is work with the accents. So if we go up here under Enhance, you're going to see two sliders. There's one for Accent and there's one for Sky Enhance. Accent's great because it's going to brighten up and relight your image, but it's using AI so it knows what to brighten and what to bring up. So basically it's a one slider thing. If I just start moving this to the right, you're gonna see that it adds a lot of brilliance into my image. And notice I'm not clipping any of my sky up here. And if I want to enhance the sky, I can bring that up too. So we'll just hit Sky Enhance. Now this is a landscape. There are a lot of details in this image. So one other thing that I might want to do is play with the AI structure tool. Now structure typically we think of it as the coarseness of an image or how much detail you want to get out of it. It's something that on a portrait would not look very good but on a landscape you want all that detail. So what I'm going to do is go here under structure AI and I'm going to bring the amount up and rule of thumb here is a little goes a long way and so if I bring that up a little bit and we're going to bring up the boost. In fact let me bring this up way too much. You're going to see that this gets garish really fast. There's too much detail. This doesn't look real anymore. So that's something to consider on a lot of these tools. They're so powerful that they kind of take over the image. So my rule of thumb is to make them hot and then bring them back. In fact, sometimes when I get them where I like them, I want to go away from it, come back and look at it again just to make sure they're not too hot. But anyway, I'm going to bring accent down the boost we just don't need that much of. And this is looking pretty good. Now, another thing that I want to note is any time during this process you want to compare this image with the original, there's a hot key on the keyboard that will do this, and it's the forward slash key. And if I press and hold that down, it's going to go back to my original image, and then when I release it, it's going to go back to the edit. So you can see how much, with just basically a couple tools here, I was able to do with this image to recover it and get it looking pretty good. So here's before here's after. So that's one thing to think about when you have something that's backlit is always underexposed because it can be fixed in post. If you overexpose, you lose those highlights, you would have lost all those details in the clouds. So anyway, something that's very powerful and you can rescue images that are very difficult to shoot with one shot in camera. So now I want to look at another one of my favorite tools in here and this is one called Studio Light. This is really cool if you're working with portraits and this portrait I'm happy with. It was shot with window light on the left hand side of the image here. But I want to show you how you can play with this and intensify it a little more. A lot of times, you know, we're out shooting something, we capture something and we didn't have flashes to use or it's not a studio type situation. Well, Studio Light allows us to simulate that a little bit. So in the tools section, if you scroll down to portrait, you're going to find Studio Light. That's the first one in here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. It's going to give me a series of sliders. Now, the way that Studio Light works is it's going to give us pinpointed light sources and I can create multiple multiple light sources in here. By default, it gives you the first one. And so we're going to play with that. Let me show you what it does. So it allows us to actually increase the light from an artificial light source, so to speak. And it allows us to blend that with the overall ambiance of the image. So let me show you how this works. So we're going to go ahead and take our pen here and I just put it in the middle of the image. I'm going to slide it up here and I'm going to go ahead and say amount. I'm going to bring that up and you're going to see that the light gets pretty intense really quickly. In fact, let's bring it down just a hair, but I want to move this around. I know this is too much, but I want to show you the effects on this. If I grab this pen and I start moving moving it around my composition, you're going to see that it relights very naturally looking pretty much from the what is an artificial source essentially. But what Luminar is doing behind the scenes is again, it does that 3D mapping when it creates the mask that's in the image. You don't have to do any of this. And so it's a lot easier to work with this than it is, let's say something that you're going to do a gradient in a traditional editor and try to blend this. This gives you something that acts like a light source. It also changes the intensity depending on the closeness I have to my subject. If I bring it back, it's going to look more natural. So let's bring it back like right around here. So now that I have some controls over this. I can actually, let's bring up some saturation so you can see this. I can change the hue. So if I want to make it look like I put a gel filter over the top. So if I want to make it kind of purplish, I can bring it in and do that. Now let's say, all right, well that looks okay, but the overall scene's pretty bright. If we go up to the top here, you're going to see brightness, smoothness, and light contrast. I can bring my brightness down, which is going to bring down the ambient light in the scene. I can play with the smoothness of the transition here. And I can also play with the light contrast, which is going to be pretty dramatic here. I can bring up the brightness some more. I'm going to bring that back a little bit and I actually don't want this one to be colored. So I'm going to bring my saturation down a little bit and might mess with the depth some and uh, just kind of get it to look more natural. And that's something I'm pretty happy with. And you can see not only it affects the face, but it affects the arms and the, the body as well. And so this is something that's very cool. And again, it's fun to use and it saves a ton of time when you're trying to do something like this versus what you would have in a traditional editor. So you can see Luminar Neo is quite powerful and it's very easy to use. That's the best part. They leverage AI to make tasks very easy. It comes down to sliders a lot of times and there's a lot of power that you get in this application. It is very cool. And I would suggest that you guys check it out for yourself. Luminar 
Luminar has moved to a subscription, and I think that you'll notice, I'll put a link below, you can check out their plans. They're very cost effective as well. When you consider the expense and costs of some other editors, this one is very reasonable, and I think it's an incredible value for what you're getting. So click the link below, check it out, and see if Luminar is right for you. There's a 30-day money-back guarantee. I will catch you guys in the next video. Until then, later.